Hey guys, Quicker Tom here, and I'm back. Uh, it's been a while. I moved, as you can see in the background, I've been kind of in the moving process, so that's why the videos haven't been out. But today I'm going to quickly talk about typing. So typing is important when we have some kind of data, uh, like this item here. And we'll say we have some sort of, yeah, item. And let's say it has an ID of uh, steak. It has an amount of 10. And typing is really good for when we have data and we use a more functional approach where we take the data in, perform operations on the data, and then spit the data out. So if we do something like, uh, like if we had like a function split stack and some item, we should return, you know, two new items, right? But that's not well denoted here because we just have this label and then we have these two tables. So if we wanted to provide better information, we could say that this is of type item, but that's not a thing. So what we have to do is we have to go up here and we have to define it. So export type item as uh, an ID, which is a string. So see here we have our ID key with our string value. And then down here we have amount, which is of type of type number. And so when we go down here to our split stack, when we say we have an argument item, we can now define it using the colon operator. And the colon is how we uh, declare a variable as a type. So we can say that this is uh, it takes an item as the as this variable, but it's of type item. So then we could return two new items and we'll say id equals item dot id amount equals item dot amount divided by two and we'll just copy paste it there we go so now we'll get two stacks back but how do we define the output behavior so with that we'll use the colon operator again at the end of our function declaration and we'll use <coughs> these parentheses to denote all the arguments that would get spit out. So we would have two items that are get sent out. So if we take our item, we can print a split stack of our, and I'll call this steak up here. Uh, and then we want to use lowercase item. We'll split, we'll split the steak stack and we should get two out. So when we print it, we should get two uh, five stack steak items. Yep, there we go. And what this did was for anybody who, or you in the future, and let's say you're writing code all the way down here. You don't know where that function is, but you want to use it. So you say, oh, I have split stack. How do I use it? Oh, well, I see it takes in an item and it spits out two items and it's called split stack. So my guess is it splits it in half, right? And so that's the most powerful thing about typing is that in the editor you get these autocompletes and that's the main reason why i use it okay so let's say we make a function for making a new item and so what we can do is we can say our stake is a new new item stake the stack size of 18 split one split two we're going to split the stake stack and we're going to print split one and split two Right, so we should output with two stacks of nine, right? And you'll notice that that was incredibly easy to write because I understood the language. But also when I go in and let's say I want to make a new item, we'll say it's a, um, a ball. Make a new item. Oh, ID, it's got to be a string. Okay, it's so probably ball, an amount, one. And we get item. And also, we get these autocompletes of understanding what the item is. Now, let's say we declare something, but we're not using the new item function. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to call this gold. And let's say it has an ID gold and an amount of 12. But when we go to use this, it's not going to recognize as gold. It's going to recognize, well, it's going to say gold here, but it's not recognizing it as any type. So let's say we want to set the type. We can define it either here, we can say that gold is an item, and then we say that is this, or if we already define gold as 
we can define it here as well. And so the difference between those two is when we say <coughs> item up here in the local, uh, that's defining this gold uh, variable name, and that's declaring that it's going to be of type item. What we do here is we set gold to be this information, uh, and then we explicitly say that this is an item. And that's the difference between those two styles. So we should see that gold still pops up as an item, and we still get the autocompletes for ID and amount, and we still should be able to split the stack and we'll get two gold items. Yep. Okay, so really quickly, I just recorded that, but I want to add in some more things here. Uh, I want to talk about the question mark operator uh, in typing, which basically means that there's a chance that this could be nil. So when we say here about this function, some action input, and then it's type string, and then should return string is a boolean, but it's got the question mark, so it might be nil. So what that means is that this is an optional operator in your function, and it's going to return maybe a string because you may or may not want the string back. So what we can see is that if we say uh, some, some action and we say input, and then we don't want to return the string, if we print out, it's going to be... Uh, that's hopefully going to be nil. And then if we say input two and we say true, uh, we should also, I'm going to disable this, we should get the string back. So we should see input two added, and then we'll see that the first one was nil because we're returning nil. And that's what's described with our typing is that uh, out may or may not be a string depending on the action of the function. Something else I wanted to look at was uh, implementing type checking for your meta table classes. And uh, what you got to do is you got to use this type creator that I used uh, earlier for the item type. And we have to define the index of the meta table as this account implementation. And this is uh, all on the type checking documentation. And I'll link that down in the description if you want to go review it for yourself. There's a lot more information than is in this video but I just gave all the things that I think are relevant for the use of type checking. Uh, also what we have to do, so this is the implementation. So this is the functions. And when we do type account, we have to say it's a meta table with a table where we uh, explicitly declare the arguments. So that's gonna be the variables within the meta table. And then we define that the table that is being set is of type the implementation. So the implementation is the uh, general module where all the fun that all the functions are being uh, represented in, like where you put all the functions in. And then this table is the specific table that becomes the meta table. So the meta table is what holds all the information. And then these functions act on the meta table, which is part of this implementation. And if you read further, it should make sense. Account, account implementation in there. Uh, only these two annotations are necessary. I guess they're uh, defining account and then they're, again, explicitly redefining it here because I don't think it has all the values in here. And then all of these are uh, standard meta table uh, methods. So that was a short tutorial on typing. If you guys have any video ideas that you want to see, drop them down below. I've been seeing a lot. I'm planning on making a video on Meditable soon. So all that good stuff. Thank you guys. Have a good day.